بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا نیم آف اللہ ہو از دا موسٹ بینیفیشنٹ اینڈ دا موسٹ مرسیفل السلام علیکم دیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ہوپ سو یو آل آر فائن اینڈ اسٹینگ سیف ایٹ ہوم دا ٹاپک دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ٹوڈے از اباؤٹ پوسٹ کلونیل اینالیسس آف دا فیمش روڈ بائی بین آفلی so before going towards the topic uh, it's very important to know about the term what is post colonial literature uh, this term arises in since uh, 1980s and numerous novelists dramatists and uh, poets have been marked as post colonial writers but uh, what actually post colonial literature is and uh, the category this category includes works that have a relationship to subjugating forces of imperialism and colonial expansion in short post colonial literature is that which has arisen primarily since the end of world war 2 from the regions of world undergoing decolonization and uh, works from all such regions in the 20th and uh, 21st centuries such as indian subcontinent south africa nigeria Uh, might be described as post colonial works ben okri was uh, basically a nigerian novelist and writer short story writer and poet and he used magic realism to convey the social and political chaos in the country of his birth and so uh, this um, all okri this novel uh, or this book won the prize in 1991 introduction post colonial realities refer to human lives and experiences which most post colonial writers attempt to explicit their in their works and ben okri is not an exception so uh, ben uh, in this book ben examines the post colonial realities that exist in nigeria in that time period and uh, post colonial realities shed light on the characters and uh, thematic concerns of ben okri and uh, he also re- uh, reveal the myth that uh, he used in this book to highlight the post colonial realities in nigeria that is uh, Uh, incorporating the spirit world with the real world so this novel captured the um, evils or the magnitude of corruption and other social evils uh, were very high in nigeria so this novel captures all uh, that corruption and the uh, ratio of uh, social evils and the novel also show one group trying to impose its belief on the other while the oppressed seems to counter the belief system of the dominated class okri uses this novel to reveal the mood of disillusionment which is a seemingly permanent feature of the post colonial ex- african experience so literature pictures life in a way to bring out the expected values and realities in men in the society and it cap- captures the complex forms of engagement between the different components of a society and its people and we can say that literature is not only an imitation of life but it's also a concept which derives from certain sustainable principles so in their spirited and desperate big to correct the distorted nation of africa held by some european and so the writers the nigerian writers standed to portray africa and the black world in rather glowing terms of beauty and idealism so despite the robust hope and idealism echoed in a nigerian literature about africa the reality of life in post magnitude paints a dismal picture of uh, a despair and disillusionment and uh, the next point is post colonial african novel 
so this term the post colonial african uh, novels or literature means or refers to writings produced after the political independence of various african states which were formally subjected to european colonial rule so most of this literature written by african authors in their home countries or in diaspora deal with issues of colonial experience or decolonization and as we all know that africans were uh, colonizers and uh, uh, european seven different european powers colonized the africans and uh, the next point is the myth of abiko uh, like abiko's fragmentation of one soul uh, strung into many lives spanning perhaps centuries and uh, ben okri's novel the famished uh, road is a story of uh, many stories whose narrative style springs from an african literary heritage already celebrated by many storytellers so abiko means uh, or this term refers to the spirits of children who die before reaching their young age so a child who dies before 20 year of age being called an abiko and the spirit or spirits who caused the death being also called abiko so not only in an uh, abiko a spirit of a child who dies young the belief is that the spirit returns to the same mother multiple times to be reborn multiple times so it was the belief that the spirit does not ever plan to stay put in life so it is indifferent to the plight of its mother and her grief so the myth of uh, um, abiko Uh, means that uh, myths acquire a significant position in the works of uh, different african writers and one such contemporary african writer who uh, strongly employs myth in his fiction and by writing is ben okri and uh, uh, this uh, book is the based on the foundation of the abiko myth which is a uh, Yoruba belief in the existence of a spirit child who has connections with the uh, spirit world and he and that child is gifted with special uh, some special kind of supernatural powers so these supernatural powers help the abiko or that specific child to constantly remain in a contact with uh, contact with the spirit world and the physical world also so the african belief that uh, all the living creatures for example animals insects birds or trees or nature and also human beings share a very common spirit and uh, that they continuously communicate uh, through a secret language so it was the belief that uh, all the living creatures that exist in africa had some secret kind of language and is also reflected in okri's writing so here in uh, this in term the myth of uh, abiko or the this point uh, uh, presents the social political or economic condition of post colonial and uh, also present uh, independent africa ruled by corrupt africa leaders belonging to the elite class so okri evokes the milieu of the poor and uh, downtrodden and invests them with the special imaginative capacities of an abiko a fable set in a never never world of fantastic trivia but a grim socio economic tale of poverty and the politics of a new colonial state so the famished road Uh, as it was uh, narrated by azro spirit uh, child a spirit child or abiko who is compelled to move between the human and the spirit realms acting as a witness to his family's chaotic history so it is a story rich in fantastical and metaphorical elements while also 
chatting nigeria's economic and uh, political corruption and uh, also human effects of war so in the famished road okri evokes the milieu of the poor and uh, downtrodden and invest them with the uh, with some special imaginative capacities of an abiko so the milieu of the poor is expanded and uh, thus the post colonial african writers portray the ordeals of the ordinary citizens of their societies who wallow in abject poverty and tattered pantry and uh, they depict their continent as a, a society characterized by a misery and oppression diseases and overcrowding these political and economic instabilities can be likened to the spirit child or abiko and its incessant coming and going the scenic presentation of nigeria household by the narrator equally portrays the level of poverty in the country so the portrayal of cultural and socio political realities in the famous road captured some critics view point that he the novel as a post colonial work and which is not different from the pre occupation of uh, uh, this book according to harry garba he says that uh, despite the background of uh, myth and magic the famous road is not a uh, uh, fable set in a never never world of fantastic trivia but a grim socio economic tale of poverty as we discussed this and slide slide in the pre this line in the previous slide also so the much agitation for independence would not be achieved as it would not translate into total freedom so the rich would recolonize the poor and there will be changes corpses soldiers everywhere ugliness blindness and then when the people expect it a great transformation these undoubtedly suggest post colonial realities so here and the post colonial realities depict in okri's book okri though his skillful handling of the respective myth including that of reincarnation as well as that of the biblical lazarus is able to portray the realities of the present day nigerian society and institutions since her independence and the independence of nigeria there has been a lot of political and economic instabilities and uh, all these are directly connected to nigerian nation and her historical background so the novel portrays the instability in the nigerian nation and uh, that is what the narrator deconstruct in the riddle thus the spirit child is an unwilling adventure into chaos and sunlight into the dream of the living and the dead so things that are not ready not willing to be born or to become things for which adequate preparations have not been made to sustain their momentous birth things that are not resolved so they keep coming and going till their life is right so history itself fully demonstrates how things of the world patrick of the condition of the spirit child so so the abicos keep coming and going till their time is right so from the foregoing it can be affirmed that the nation's authentic independence which is likened to abiko's condition is yet to be achieved moreover one of the living abikos 
8 who is also pessimistic about the condition of the nitraria also attest to it he says so these were uh, these are the words of 8 our country is an abico country like the spirit child it keeps coming and going one day it will decide to remain it will become strong i wouldn't see it his voice changed became more natural almost gentle eighth in the above lines is of the view that to one day nigeria as a nation will be stable with her reform policies so there was hope and uh, but this is a prophecy he will not live to witness so he is like one of the founding fathers of the nigerian nation who fought for the unity and also for the stability of the country but was short, uh, cut short by death so consequently the description of uh, three abicos in madam scoto's belly and their position has a strong signification in relation to nigeria so it is through azro's uh, super sensory telepathic and uh, clairvoyant power that this description is made clear to the reader and he says that uh, and i saw that madam koto was pregnant with three strange children and the two of them sat upright and uh, the third was upside down in their womb so one of them had a little beard the second had fully formed teeth and the third had picked eyes so they were devious they kicked and tugged as their cord they were the worst type of spirit children and they had no intention of being born so the excerpt above even madam koto knows that as of being bad luck and uh, misfortune to his parents nigeria so azro is likened to the echo of independence and its attendant problems this independence has brought only trouble azro is the embodiment of the nigerian nation that has been born the three other abicos are azro's extension and they refused to be born in their inability to become a nation of their own going by the disposition of three abigos in the belly as observed by azaro so it is better for them not to be born through azaro decides to stay he still struggle with existence so it suggests that nigeria suffers because adequate, adequate preparations have not been made to sustain their momentous births which will be the case of the three abicos that he depicts as a worst type of spirit child so the scenic presentation of azro's household by the narrator was that uh, the poverty stricken home of azaro also depicts the poor leadership quality that is common in the nigeria so as uh, i i didn't told you in the uh, starting that uh, the poverty rate was very very high in nigeria so the leadership in aptitude erodes all efforts made to cut off the relationship between nigeria and the abico world and the instability in the country though the problems in the country are not caused by us they are handiwork of nigeria colonizer which created the nigerian nation so these problems are foreseen by the herbalist which the prophecies that azro and uh, that is a child who didn't want to be born but also who will fight with that so this explains that uh, nigeria as a nation would not have existed as a nation if not the colonizers intervention okri accepts the fact 
that suffering is one of the great characters of the book the different ways people suffer these are hundred there are hundreds of variations but there is just one god there and that god is suffering so as i told you that uh, the people in nigeria suffered a lot they suffered from many problems many uh, uh, they suffered lot of injustice inequality and uh, they can do nothing for themselves they were totally helpless and they were totally dependent on the um, people who colonized them so they were totally on the mercy of all those people and uh, as i told you that uh, they were suffering from hardships from hunger and from unemployment and from depression and oppression so there was lot of suffering from which these people uh, suffered a lot and uh, the underscores that nigeria as a nation has leaders who do not seek her for her stability rather they are interested in and uh, their selves and uh, they keep and acquiring on acquiring wealth which they cannot use after all how to blind to our future which depicts the near death state of the nation and, uh, and also the elliptic status in policy formulation formulations and implementation so these uh, people these nigerian people or we can say that these black people uh, suffered a lot and uh, they faced lot of problems in their life the poverty rate was very high uh, in that country in that specific time period in that specific era so this uh, explains that nigeria as a nation would not have existed as a nation and if not for the colonizer in intervention so the diviner's prophecy is like to azaro's father dream his dream attributed our problems to both the colonizer and the uh, leadership in aptitude in our countries azaro says that he saw our people drying in poverty in famine drought in uh, uh, divideness and the blood of war so he saw our people always preyed upon by other powers manipulated by the western world our history and uh, achievements wicked out of existence and he saw the rich of our country he saw the array of our politicians how corruptible they were how blind to our future how greedy they become so okri accepts the suffering that people suffered a lot this is the suffering of nigerians who could recount their tales in hundred folds and the nigeria becomes the battle ground for many spirits fighting for the people domination the people are visited with epidemic hunger great pain and uh, suffering so it was the view point of azro that everyone had concluded that suffering had unhinged the minds of the entire family they also said that ad had been bound twice for treatment small as he was he had uh, just free from the ropes and uh, taken to roaming in the wild forest and uh, and the hot trees and uh, his feet bleeding scores on his shaven hair haired uh, uh, and racing and shouting out curses and frightening the birds animals with his madness so the people there suffered a lot and they suffered from uh, hunger from depression from a lot of problems and uh, this explains that how everybody in the society suffers their houses and property are uh, vanished totally vanished and for instance as family we get their house because uh, it has been irreparably uh, vandalized so the roof has fallen the wall tightened so 
it means that they suffered a lot they uh, lose their or they sacrifice all their things but, uh, just to save their life aids family so uh, aids family navigate their house because it has been irreparably vandalized and uh, the roof has fallen and while the whole house is filled with water and reptiles this is why its mother has to suffer a mental breakdown and his father runs into the bush and comes out later on to protest against the injustice but is killed in a most dreadful way this is one of the features of post colonial nigerian society where there is a high level of poverty very high level of poverty people suffered a lot of poverty people were very poor and uh, unwanted killing among the populace even azro's father has to condescend to carry loads in order to feed his family so it was very difficult for the head of the family to feed his family uh, because uh, as i i am again and again focusing on the point that poverty rate was very very high so as for his wife she suffers the scoring plays of the son and she walks on the road that has been made terribly hot by the flurry of the sun while hawking her cheap wares so both the father and mother were doing labor of different kind and very uh, they were very hard working and they want to feed their family and uh, furthermore the second character is madam koto so the she constitutes one of the uh, impediments of the smooth growth of promising community nigeria so add as the rose spirit child friend makes an attempt and uh, at eliminating madam koto who represents political tyranny oppression and again domination so his dagger is only stuck her arm causing no fatal harm at attempt can be likened to several attempts that uh, nigerian government has made to sanitize the polity through her reform society but uh, has yielded no result so ad equally reiterated this he knows that will fail i failed he continued i knew i would fail and uh, my destiny was not to be a scn but a catalyst so a statement underscores that he shares the temperament of a nigerian nationalist who championed the cause of the nigerian nation and besides this the attitude of the black tiger shows an attempt to develop a political culture that is beneficial to the people and will be realistic he out rightly reject the party of the rich because of its posture and violence and uh, he realizes that the party of the poor is closely aligned to that of the rich in terms of unleashing violence on the people and uh, causing fear to the ordinary people of the ghetto so to him the two parties are two sides of a coin he thereafter tries to develop his own to be independent of the existing two so he therefore puts the poor in the heart of his belief and uh, he also wants to house and uh, educate them and provides all the necessities of life but he fails why because his attempts are an existential daring of the enormous political decadence before him his actions can be likened as the doomed post colonial cycle of nigeria's historical destruction 
and also the um, failure of nationalist idealism and uh, democratic ideology to survive political independence. So it can be deduced that uh, Azro could be considered as a metaphor for political, social and economic inadequacies of uh, several places in Africa and more importantly in Nigeria. And uh, his death and rebirth could be likened to an attempt by many past and present Nigerian governments to evolve a viable political system and that has met with a lot of frustration. The horrible situation remains the same and while people continue to nurse their sorrow and abject poverty in the Nigerian society, that's why Azaro reflects in his excerpt, the ocean becomes calm. I saw the baby growing and it saw me and stared at me. And I was knocked about in the old man dreams of a dying country that had been yet been born, a nation born, a, and dying from a lake of vision, too much greed and corruption, and enough love, too many divisions. So, um, uh, people in Africa suffered a lot. They faced a lot of problems and different kinds of problems from which they suffered a lot their families suffered and they worked very hard for their survival because at that time period at that time period survival was very difficult for the people for the families so uh, if families or people want to survive they uh, do a lot of hard work and uh, after doing lots of hard work, both the mother and father works to feed their children. So it was very difficult time period for the Nigerian people. So this book has considered and analyzed the post-colonial realities and these Post-colonial realities were considered or analyzed by Ben Okri's The Famished Road and the human conditions are painstaking and this is the situation that engendered Okri to use the myth of spirit child to explicate the post-colonial realities in Nigeria. The novel employs a unique narrative style and incorporating the spirit world with the real world. Thus, Azaro's power to oscillate the two worlds captured the Nigerian society. And both texts captured the Nigerian society where the magnitude of corruption and other social vices are very high. And for instance, the oppression and suppression of the poor by the rich in the two text is a clear signification of the Nigeria situation. Azro and his friend, Ed represents the poor while Madame Koto is an example of the rich the oppre that oppresses the poor. Therefore, mm, it explains how uh, Okuri uses the intrinsic elements of uh, prose fiction to explicate the Nigerian post-colonial realities, the re those realities that exist in the novel, and uh, Ben wants to show the uh, all the post-colonial realities that exist in that time period with the help of his novel. The political and uh, political inaptitude has become an untold story and it seems to have become an order of the day within the polity. So corruption came upon the people and grew fat, diseases dwelled in them and misery had many children among them. So the world turned upside down, creation became confusion and besides Azaros decides to stay and this is one of the challenges from which People of the world can draw a lesson particularly. Nigeria. Nigerians may have to widen the uh, horizon of their knowledge to include an understanding of their spiritual universe. And it is then they could boost of their capacity to break away from the cycle of ill-fortunate adversely affecting the 
political and some social realities in the society and uh, apart from all these characters azaro ed madam koto and black tiger tiger there are also some other characters that portrays the woes of independence and um, on these also shows a metaphors for the heartless greedy and uh, the cruel rulers of the nation because the, as uh, again and again i'm saying that rulers and were cruel so the rulers at that at that time period were very cruel for their uh, public for their um, for the people so it can also be reiterated that uh, black tiger is a combination of twist like essence and that uh, and the uncontrollable raw energy of ogun so um, it was all about uh, this lecture so here are the references from where the data was taken thank you so much hope so you all understand this lecture stay blessed